Welcome back to 16 by 9, the bigger picture. They're cute and cuddly and on the brink of extinction. Borneo is one of the few places on earth where orangutans still exist in the wild. But thanks to the efforts of a dedicated Canadian, there's hope for these jungle survivors. Here's our Carolyn Jarvis. Borneo, a tropical island paradise on the Indonesian archipelago. Beautiful beaches, bustling streets, and colorful markets. But more than anything, this is orangutan country. They might be one of our closest relatives. Their name even means man of the forest. But man is destroying their homes at an alarming rate. And Borneo is one of only two places on earth where these red-haired primates still swing free through the jungle. As our world grows into theirs, these great apes are left teetering on the edge of extinction. Their best hope for survival an unlikely savior from a world away. Uh, I'm originally from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. She is Canada's version of Jane Goodall, the world's foremost expert on orangutans, Barute Galdikas. The daughter of Lithuanian immigrants, she came to Canada as an infant at the end of World War II. Right away, Barute had a love for nature. I did a lot of reading and I spent a lot of time outside. Barute's passion for primates was sparked at the age of six with her first library book, Curious George. And with that, a lifelong fascination with orangutans was born. There was such a serenity and calmness about them that I could relate to. I always felt a kinship with them. That kinship was so strong that in 1971, Barute threw away the comforts of Canada to rough it in the jungle and launch what would become the longest continuous study of any mammal in history. I think orangutans are what we were 15 million years ago, and except that we left the Garden of Eden and they didn't. But along the way, that fruitful garden turned deadly as industry destroyed their habitat. So Barute started Orangutan Foundation International, a center for injured and orphaned orangutans. I mean, we know they're all traumatized because their mothers were killed in front of them. Some of them come in physically traumatized, they will have wounds. Barute takes it upon herself to heal those wounds. But her work goes much further. Here, humans have to raise these animals. You want to try climbing? They teach them how to swing. Go on, I know you can do it. And how to build their beds. Hi. You going to build a nest? <gasps> yeah, put it over there. That's better. Young orangutans rely on their mothers more than any other mammal, with the exception of humans. Females teach and protect their young for up to 10 years. Left on their own, they're helpless. <gasps> oh, you tickles. In a place like Borneo, where many families live in poverty, jobs in the logging industry are coveted. That's why conservation can be a tough sell. But it turns out orangutans are pretty good salesmen. Of the 200 local people that we employ, most of them get to have a real feeling for the animals. Then they become uh, very protective of them. That attachment goes both ways. The orangutans cling to their human protectors, who feed them, bathe them, play with them. Like children, they have personalities. Some are shy, some curious, others bold. <laughs> Um, 
progress here is measured in small steps, but the ultimate one is returning these animals to the wild. Come on, come on, come on Kristen. Today, Kristen is about to try again. Uh, this is the third time that she's been released in the wild. Uh, this is the first time that it's taken. The first time that we released it, which was many, many years ago, she just sat on the ground for 10 months and didn't move. And the second time we released her, she disappeared into the forest and we found her full of wounds, starving and with a huge abscess in her gums. So we had to bring her back to the care center. For those who make the transition successfully, meeting up with Barute again is like reconnecting with an old friend. This is Princess. You think it's for you, right? Even after 30 years, there is an unmistakable bond. I thought this coffee was for me. Princess is the one who was on the cover of National Geographic when she was an infant with my son. And that was many, many years ago. Now she's a grandmother. Barute is quite literally with these animals from childhood through death. And when she loses one, it's like losing a member of the family. Dear Ruth, please forgive us because we couldn't save you. We tried the best that we could. The future is far from certain for Borneo's orangutans. We have close to 100 orangutans that could go back to the wild today. Unfortunately, there is no forest available. The rainforest is being slashed at an unprecedented rate replaced by palm oil plantations. I would say that approximately 90% of the animals here are a direct result of the clearing of forest because palm oil is so lucrative. Defending these animals has put Barute's life in danger. People would actually call my house, so my husband's house, and uh, leave you know, leave very serious threats. Despite those threats, she's not going anywhere. I see myself doing this until I get really old. <laughs> and for those who may still question why a Canadian would dedicate her life to the orangutans of Borneo, Barute has just one request. Come and meet them and you'll understand. Once people actually experience these benevolent, gentle creatures, uh, they're never the same again. And that's it for us tonight. If you have a story idea, just call us at 1-877-TELL-69 or visit our website at global16by9.com. I'm Mary Garofello. Thank you for watching. And from all of us here, good night. If you've got a story idea for 16 by 9, call our tip line. Sixteen by nine, the bigger picture. That's a wrap.